What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and today we're going to be taking a look at yet another post-rotation deck and that is going to be Rayquaza GX Vicavolt. So Rayquaza GX had a little bit of hype from Celestial Storm, it was definitely the new big deck to beat and actually did pretty well at the recent World Championships, uh, taking three of the top eight spots including yours truly coming in at fifth. Definitely go check out my top eight retirement report if you want to hear about how I did. But, uh, you know, looking ahead, I think a lot of people were wondering if Rayquaza had what it took to stay around in this new format since we lost things like Max Elixir that previously made the deck so powerful. Uh, but luckily, the format does slow down a little bit in this new rotation format, and I think that gives the deck a little bit of extra time to set up a stage two like Vicable. So let's take a look at the deck and see how it's going to stack up. So of course we are playing Rayquaza GX, playing four of this guy for this, uh, you know, Dragon Break attack. That's going to be kind of the heart and soul of the deck. It does 30 times the amount of basic Grass and Lightning energy attached to your Pokemon. Uh, so this is really nice because with Vicavolt we can get out a ton of energy. Uh, and you know help us hit for more damage and we also still have this ability stormy winds whenever you play this pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn you may discard the top three cards of your deck if you do attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this pokemon so yet again another way to get some extra energy into play uh, stormy winds it's a little bit riskier in this type of deck as opposed to the more max elixir basic uh, you know version of the deck that did well at worlds just because we have a lot of moving pieces like rare candies and evolutions So stormy winds a lot of times it's gonna be a little bit risky But it's especially good in the late game whenever Rayquazas go down and you need to hit certain numbers with dragon break uh, But then we also have a GX attack worth mentioning as well tempest GX discard your hand and draw 10 cards I think this is actually one of the reasons this deck is so good is because a lot of times you can just dump your hand on turn one and draw draw into the rare candy Vicavolt combo that you need for your second turn. So Rayquaza has a lot of good things going on for it. A couple other things to point out though. Three retreat, kind of annoying. But luckily when Rayquaza is in the active spot, we're trying to take knockouts with it anyways. But Fairy Weakness is worth mentioning because Gardevoir actually is another deck uh, that previously didn't see a whole lot of play for the past you know six months or so uh, that I think has potential to make a resurgence in this new post rotation format so you might have to be a little bit um, you know wary of running into Gardevoir variants but other than that Rayquaza is a pretty solid attacker so like I mentioned Vicavolt is going to be the main way we are going to be accelerating energy in the post rotation format here and it has this ability strong charge once during your turn before you attack you may search your deck for a basic lightning or grass I'm sorry, basic lighting and grass, and attach them to your Pokemon any way that you like. So we can get out a ton of energy this way, especially if you get out two Vicavolts. It feels like you can't lose in a lot of games. So, uh, you know, the deck just takes off whenever you get a Vicavolt into play. Uh, we're also playing, of course, two copies of Tapu Lele GX for that Wonder Tag ability. Also, we can power up Energy Drive uh, to potentially make use of this, but most of the time, Dragon Break is just going to be a far superior attack. And the last Pokemon we're running is one copy of Marshadow. This was one of my absolute favorite cards that I ran in Rayquaza GX at Worlds. And it's still a card that I think is good in this new post-rotation format. So a um, you know popular combo I will do with this deck is turn one, I'll maybe Ultra Ball for a Grubbin or something like that. Or even use Pokemon Fan Club to grab a Grubbin. And then I'll also grab a Marshadow. And then I'll use that ability Let Loose. Whenever you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may have each player shuffle their hand in their deck and draw four cards and after I do that I'll use Tempest GX to refill my hand and hopefully draw into the rare candy Vicavolt combo. Also Marsh Shadow just good to help dig on certain turns if maybe after you played your supporter and you you know with the rare candy Vicavolt you kind of have another shot at getting what you need to complete your combos with Let Loose. Also against decks like Gardevoir GX that play Sylveon GX uh, that use that magical ribbon attack or decks that play the Alolan Vulpix that have has beacon It can be a solid ability at disrupting uh, You know your opponent whenever they search out some cards out of their deck So going on to the rest deck pretty streamlined stuff here guys We're just going for max consistency no real techs or anything like that uh, The hardest part with stage 2 decks is just getting your stage 2 into play and that's what we're gonna be focusing on here uh, so if you notice, we actually don't play any copies of Charger Bug. We're just playing a 303 Vicavolt line, but we are playing four copies of Rare Candy. Of course, the best card in the game. 
Uh, so we get to, of course, skip that middle evolution and go straight into our Vicavolt. So like I said, we're just maxing out our counts of this to ensure that we can get out Vicavolt as quick as possible. Uh, for our ball cards, of course, for Ultra Ball, the best uh, search card we probably have right now. But we're also playing a couple of other ones. We're playing one copy of Nest Ball. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench. That's going to allow us to, you know, maybe get out a second Grubbin or a Grubbin a little bit quicker. But then we're also playing two copies of Mysterious Treasure. So Mysterious Treasure, discard a card from your hand. If you search your deck for a Dragon or Psychic Pokemon and put it into our hand. So this is going to allow us to search everything outside of the, the Vicavolt line. So it's going to be nice at ensuring we can get a turn one Tapu Lele or, you know, getting that Rayquaza GX halfway through the game uh, to get another energy into play to maybe help us take a knockout or to grab Mars Shadow. So just another search card that's going to increase our consistency. Uh, we also have two copies of Rescue Stretcher as a form of recovery in this deck. Uh, just because especially with stormy winds sometimes we are going to mill away uh, pokemon we might not want to sometimes and or even a copy of rescue stretcher sometimes so we want two copies here just in case of those certain situations but it's going to allow us to get some pokemon back into play See, so we have two copies of Switch here. Uh, just switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon. Everything in this deck has a very annoying retreat cost, so we definitely want some ways to be able to deal with that if possible. Uh, we have two copies of Energy Recycler, definitely a very critical card in the deck. Shuffle five basic energy from your discard pile into your deck. So we definitely need energy in our deck at basically all times. That way our Vic Volts can constantly search out energy. Uh, so we definitely don't want to go a turn where we only have, you know, one energy in deck and can't get, uh, you know, a, a strong charge off. So definitely playing two copies of this, especially in the case that we have to mill one away with Stormy Winds. Let's see. Uh, three copies of Choice Band just to increase our damage output. Uh, you could opt to play something like Wishful Baton in here if you want. But honestly, I think Vicavolt does a fine job at keeping energy in play most of the time anyways. Uh, Choice Band, I think, is definitely better just to get over the hump to take certain KOs. And for our supporter line, very, very streamlined, much like the rest of this deck. We're playing, of course, four copies of Cynthia, the best draw supporter we currently have in, in this new format. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Lily. So draw until you have six cards in your hand, but if it's your first turn, draw until you have eight cards in your hand. So we do play Pokemon Fan Club in this list as well, but Lily is an alternate first turn supporter, especially if we open with a Rayquaza and a Grubbin. Sometimes just going for a turn one Lily is going to be better. And also, even in the mid to late game, if we have, let's say, a rare candy in hand, but we don't have Vicavolt, sometimes playing Lily is going to be better than playing a Cynthia because it allows us to draw cards while keeping one of the two cards that we need to complete our combo. Also, have four copies of Guzma. Of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on, this is a very aggressive deck, so I like the high count of Guzma here. Uh, also, too, everything in this deck, like I said, has a terrible retreat cost, so sometimes Guzma is just a great switching card at dealing with those uh, kind of clunky retreating Pokemon that we have. Uh, one copy of Pokemon Fan Club. Search your deck for up to two basics. Put them into your hand. I really like Pokemon Fan Club here because uh, Mars Shadow and Rayquaza GX both have coming into play abilities whenever you bench them from your hand. They're not cards that make use of their abilities with Nest Ball as an example. So Pokemon Fan Club is going to be, I think, superior in this deck as to oppose something like Apricorn Maker, which I think some people have been trying out in uh, other decks. And then the last part we have is two copies of Volkner. So search your deck for an item card and a lightning energy card, reveal them, put them into your hand. So one thing that is kind of nice about this deck is a lot of times it can just kind of live off the board. As long as you have a Rayquaza and Vicavolt in play or like two Rayquazas and a Vicavolt, you really don't need too much other than energy every turn, which your Vicavolt kind of fulfills. So Volkner is really nice because we usually only might need like a switch or something in case of a Guzma, or we might need uh, you know, a rare candy to get our Vicavolt into play, or similarly, we could, we might have rare candy. This will allow us to grab an Ultra Ball as an example. So, like I said, most of the time, the deck can kind of live off the board, and you don't need too many cards outside of a Rayquaza or two and a Vicavolt. So, even though this is a slower supporter, uh, it's not a very draw heavy one, I think it gets the job done just fine.
and to round out the list we have seven grass energy and seven lightning energy of course so you guys this is going to be the list i'm currently messing with for a quasi vicable it's a pretty consistent deck like i said not too many frills or bells or whistles just everything we need to get up and running so let's head over to the battle portion of the video and i'll show you how this deck looks in action Alrighty guys, so we found ourselves a game here, we're just going to call it the flip, which we do lose, so not too fun, but at least on the plus side, that kind of gives us an opportunity to go for a Tempest GX right away. Okay, so we do start with Rayquaza as well, so that actually will get us a little bit closer to doing that. And we have kind of an interesting hand to work with here. Um, we have Volkner, so we can maybe go for, I don't know, a, hmm like a mysterious treasure maybe to get an additional ray out but we have the ultra wall to get grub in um, but let's just wait and see what our opponent has here before we get too deep into figuring out this next turn so it looks like we are playing against a, another rayquaza gx deck they are playing acrobike so i'm curious if this is going to be um like more of a streamlined like basic heavy version of rayquaza with energy switches and things like that or if it's going to be a vicavolt variant i think the vicavolt variant is probably a little bit more likely but on ptcgo you never know what you're going to run into so we'll have to see what our opponent is going to have to work with here so they're going to play a volt going for an ultra ball and a lightning okay so i'm assuming after this ultra ball we'll get a better idea of what we're going against but uh, we could even be seeing a Marsh Shadow hit the board. Okay, but it is going to be a Grubbin, and they just got a weakness policy in the process as well, so looks like they are a little bit afraid of Gardevoir. And, okay, so we have a little bit of an interesting hand here. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to end this turn by using Tempest GX. I'm just trying to think, do we Marsh Shadow beforehand because I'm trying to think like we have two rescue stretchers and I would hate to get rid of both of our stretchers right on the first turn of the game here um, so I feel like we yeah like we attach a grass right I feel like we have to because we have to tempest this turn or we could even Guzma the Grubbin and maybe go for uh, a tempest then I think that is an option but let's see uh, let's go for this Ultra Ball here. Definitely want to get rid of the Lightning. And unfortunately, we're going to get rid of a Stretcher as well. So we have Rayquaza. Let's see what we have in deck. We have both of our Switches. One Energy Recycler looks to be prized. So I think I think we go for the Grub in here. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Um, yeah, we don't want to go for another Raid just yet. Just because uh, we definitely need to get the Scrub down turn one. Also, I was trying to think, do we want to go for a Lily that was also, or not a Lily, but a Lele to grab Fan Club that could have done uh, something similar. But here, we're going to get down this Grubbin, and then I think we just Volkner. Yeah, I think kind of my game plan here is we can grab ourselves a Mysterious Treasure and actually a Lightning Energy, and we might be able to get some value out of this, um, out of this Rescue Stretcher before... Uh, I definitely should have grabbed the lightning here. I think I, I may have misplayed. Well, actually, no, because we have the Guzma. We weren't going to play that anyway. So, yeah, yeah, that definitely makes sense. So, here, what I'm going to do is use Stormy Winds. And if we actually mill a Pokemon, we can make use of Stretcher. And we do. We actually get a Grubbin into the discard pile. So, we are at least going to be able to make use of Rescue Stretcher before we have to dump this hand. Okay. Yeah, so I like where we're at now. We can get down this Grass Energy and our turn with a Tempest GX. So let's see, and okay, we do have Lele, so we can grab our other Volkaner out of the deck and get Rare Candy in that way for next turn. So we just have to hope our opponent does not hit us with a Marsh Shadow. Uh, so we are going to see a Cynthia that is not a Judge, that's a good sign so far. Uh, like I said, I just really need to make sure they don't have Marsh Shadow, and we're going to be in a, honestly, a pretty good spot on this next turn here, I think. Because if we can get out a Vicable, we're going to be hitting for 120, plus our attachment for turns 150, plus an energy on a Rayquaza with Stormy Winds, it's going to be 180. So I think we're actually going to be in a fine spot here. So here we can go for the Lele and grab ourselves that other Volkaner. That way we can guarantee the rare candy here. So we'll do that. We'll grab rare candy. Do we grab a Lightning Energy? Um, I think we just leave it in deck. We have plenty of energy already. We kind of want to leave those in there uh, for our Vicavolts. 
So here we'll do strong charge. And yep, so we'll get some energy onto, I guess, yeah, we'll just kind of split our energy around anyways. We have an attachment for turn as well that we can do, so that's gonna be fine. Uh, so yeah, we can do that, and then we can get down this Rayquaza GX and use Stormy Winds to get our last energy in play. So we get rid of a Mars Shadow, a good card to get rid of, and a Treasure card we don't really need at this point. And so here we can actually just Dragon Break for 180, just enough to knock out this Rayquaza GX. All right, so we have a pretty good hand ready to go. We have a draw supporter, we have some energy. Uh, okay, we are gonna see a Guzma. Our opponent must not have anything. So unfortunately for them, we do have the switch. We can just switch back into this Rayquaza GX and take a knockout with Dragon Break here. So 180 to poor little Grubbin. So our opponent did not have the best of starts that game, unfortunately. But let's hop into another game and see what we can make happen. So this time we are gonna win the coin flip. That is good. Definitely wanna try to get set up before our opponent if possible. So we have another Rayquaza GX start, that's fine with me. And we have Mysterious Treasure, let's see, what, what do we do? Um, I think we might just go for Fan Club, potentially? Okay, yeah, we definitely go for Fan Club since we top decked the Rare Candy, so... Um, we can Mysterious Treasure, we'll get rid of the Cynthia, even though we can get energy in the discard pile. Um, uh, we still don't have an additional energy to attach for turn, so and we have the Lily ready to go for next turn, so I think it's fine there. So yeah, we'll grab ourselves a Pokemon Fan Club, and here I would actually love to go for a Marsh Shadow to start our opponent out with a kind of a bad hand, but uh, we have the Rare Candy Vicable, and I just don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to, you know, risk losing that if we go for a Mars Shadow. So just prioritizing, making sure that we set up more than disrupting our opponent from setting up. But here we're going to use Stormy Winds. We have Rare Candy Vicable in hand, so I, our odds of milling something that we need is going to be pretty low. But unfortunately, we didn't hit an energy there, and we're just going to attach this Lightning Energy for turn, and uh, we can just pass here over to our opponent. So. Uh, they are starting with a Froki, so I'm curious what type of deck this is. Is it like a straight Greninja GX deck, or is it like a Zorart Greninja deck? I think these are going to be our most likely, um, you know, of scenarios that we're going to run into. So our opponent is going to go for a Nest Ball, and we are seeing a Zeru hit the bench. So this is going to be a Zorart GX Greninja GX deck. So using that Greninja GX line to, you know, increase their damage output to try to more easily take one hit knockout. So our opponent's going to get down Froki. Couple Zeruas and a Tapu Koko, so a decent little start from them so far. They are going to get a double chorus energy off that energy lotto. Let's see where they're going to put that down. Okay, so they're going for the Tapu Koko, opting to try to spread in the early games here. But uh, we're going to go for this rare candy Vicavolt. And here we're going to use Strong Charge, so we're going to get a Grass and Lightning out of the deck. That way we don't draw into this energy after we use a Lily. Uh, hopefully that'll increase our odds of drawing into more crucial cards. So we're going to hang on to this Rescue Stretcher and then just draw a couple more cards here. So, okay, so we have a Grubbin in the discard pile. Um, just trying to think. We could get that out. We could play Ultra Ball. Honestly, I might save this hand because our opponent might go for a Guzma or something like that or a Counter Catcher to try to strand something with Tapu Koko. And I really don't want to get rid of the Switch or the Guzma that we have just in case of something like that. And, uh, you know, we don't really need anything too much else at this point. We're not really in danger of being knocked out by anything our opponent has. So, um, you know, just going to be a little conservative here and hang on to uh, our hand for the moment. So we are going to see a timer ball from our opponent getting the double heads. Okay. Um, I'm sure they're excited about that. Going to grab that double Zorark GX. So we're going to see Zorak GX hit the board. That is going to allow them to start trading through their deck and probably start, you know, drawing into some more pieces that they need to set up their Greninjas and all of that type of stuff. So they're going to trade away a Max Potion. Definitely a card not very good in this matchup since Rayquaza. It's going to take one hit knockouts most of the time anyways. So we're going to see another trade here. I'm sure they they would love to get down another Froakie. I'm not sure if they have the means to do it, but okay, they're just going to end their turn by Flying Flip, softening up some of my Pokemon here, and um, so here I believe we can actually take a knockout on Azor Arc GX. So we're going to use Strong Charge, I guess just to thin, yeah, we can do that, thin some energy out of this deck. 
And we do have some more Rayquazas in the deck, so that's what I wanted to check for here. And so yeah, we can Ultra Ball. Try to think, we have another Grub, and we could even get that out of the discard pile. But we have the one Vicavolt, and we have plenty of energy in play already, so I'm not sure if we even need it at that, at that point. So let's just get rid of the Stretcher and the Cynthia. And here we can grab another Rayquaza GX and get at least one more energy in play with Stormy Winds here. And, oh, okay. So I didn't realize I had no energy in the discard pile, my bad guy. So that's definitely a bit of a suboptimal play uh, just because I had energy I could have Ultra Balled away. So um, definitely not an optimal play, but nevertheless, I think we're in a good spot because we can still take the one hit knockout on the Zorak GX thanks to that attachment we still had in hand. So, uh, you know, kind of a small play uh, that's sometimes comes with playing on PTCGO in real life. It's easier to like, you know, have your energies poking out of your discard pile to always remind you you have some in there. So I uh, do apologize about that. But luckily, like I said, we're still in a good spot. We are able to knock out that Zorak GX, limiting our opponent's draw power and taking two prizes in the process. So even if they keep using Flying Flip, not really too worried about it. Um, you know, if we can just keep knocking out Zoroarks, I'm fine. And here, this is another situation where uh, I didn't play that Ultra Ball a turn earlier, just because like I said, I wanted to hang on to the Switch just in case something like this happened. All of our Pokemon have kind of clunky retreat costs, and he's trying to, you know, strain this Vicavolt in the active spot while using Flying Flip, so. Uh, but here what we can do is actually go for a Tapu Lele, so we can get rid of the Rare Candy and probably the Cynthia, and... Okay, so we have our other Lele prize, that's not good, but you know what, we still have Marsh Shadow, and what I'd like to do is go for a Guzma this turn if possible, that's kind of what I was trying to eye down uh, off this Ultra Ball, but what we can do is we can Strong Charge, you know, thin a couple of energies out of the deck before we play this Marsh Shadow, so we're going to get uh, two more energy into play. Uh, we can attach this energy from hand to the active vehicle and play Switch. So at the very least, we can guarantee that we are going to go into um, a Rayquaza GX. And here we can use Marshall using that Let Loose ability that is going to shrink our opponent's hand size and ours in the process. And Okay, so we didn't get a Guzma, but honestly, we're still on a fantastic spot. We can refill our hand with this Lily, or we can even play Volkner. Oh, but we get the victory screen yet again. Um, I guess they didn't get anything good off of those four cards. So uh, yeah, Rayquaza GX putting in some work here. But our opponent does have a fairy deck box for this game, and um, yeah, if we're playing against Gardevoir, we're probably about to be in for a bit of trouble. Um, the one good thing going for a closet that, uh, you know, as opposed to Gardevoir, is that um, our deck, I think, is a little bit more aggressive. It can get set up a little bit quicker, so we can potentially outspeed them. That's really the only thing that I think we have going for us. So here I'm a fan club going for a Grubbin and a Rayquaza GX. And even though we don't have any energy in the discard pile, I think I really need to use Stormy Winds no matter what. Okay, and luckily we did hit some. But the reason is we can't really afford to miss a beat against Gardevoir. We have to just hope that we outspeed them. And this is going to be one way we can do that. Just being pretty aggressive. Um, you know, trying to just get as many energies as absolutely possible into play. So here we're going to go for Marsh Shadow using that Let Loose ability. And, okay, so we do have a supporter for next turn. Unfortunately, we don't have Rare Candy Vicavolt just yet. But, um, so yeah, definitely a good start right there. We were able to get a Grubbin, an additional Rayquaza in play, and the Marsha. But here our opponent has an Apricorn Maker to start with. So, unfortunately, Marsha didn't quite shut our opponent out of the game like I was hoping for. So, it looks like we are going to have to actually play a real game here. So, our opponent's getting rid of a... Or an Acerola, definitely a good card to get rid of, much like Max Potion. It is pretty useless against a deck like this that usually just takes one-hit knockouts. So here our opponent is going to play Tapu Lele GX, okay. Kind of interesting, we're seeing them bench it this turn, so they are going to go for a Guzma, interesting. And we're going to see a Nest Ball as well, okay. Okay, so they're trying to set up uh, you know, a Sylveon. Uh, kind of what it looks like they're trying to do is it looks like next turn they're going to try to go for some sort of Guzma play where they strand something active and use Magical Ribbon to set up. So that is something we are going to have to, to watch out for. Luckily we do still have uh, some switches in deck. And what we do here, I think we just attach to... 
Um, trying to think. Yeah, I think we we can spread our energy around a little bit if we choose to. Yeah, I think we're just going to attach to the active because our opponent is going for a Guzma next turn, it appears. So I think this energy is safe on the active. And unfortunately, we do whiff the rare candy uh, Vikavolt in this situation. But, um, no, it's okay. We can Ultra Ball. We can get rid of this Lele and probably Guzma and go for probably another Rayquaza GX. I think that could be good here just to get an additional energy into play. I also think getting out another Grubbin could be good as well. Just trying to think. We could play the Switch out of our hand as well. Um, just trying to think what do we do here I think we go for a Rayquaza GX first before we decide on anything else we get rid of Lele and we get rid of Guzma because we're going to go for a Tempest GX here so we'll do Rayquaza just taking a peek just checking what we have in the deck alright so we can use that Stormy One's ability and if we get another Grubbin with the, the mill here okay we do uh, we can actually use a Rescue Stretcher to get it back into play, just in case our opponent might try to knock out our Grubbin. So, yeah, we'll put this Grubbin, I think, back onto our bench. And if we can get out double Vicavolt, even though we are playing against a Fairy deck, that could kind of, um, you know, even even the exchange. So here, I guess we'll play the Switch, or no, we'll play the Energy Recycle, or at least get some energy back into the deck. And... Um, yeah, I guess, wait, yeah, I guess we'll play it, but no, our opponent has Guzma, so we're kind of running the risk if they have DCE, they can knock out this Ray with two energy, but more than likely, I think they're just going to go for a Magical Ribbon, just because they, they only have a two-card hand prior to their draw for turn, so I think they have to Magical Ribbon. Okay, but they do have DCE, and we are going to see a Guzma, that is not good. Um, honestly, I think a Magical Ribbon would have been much more likely but maybe they drew a supporter for the turn that they're going to have for next turn so they're like well i can take a knockout here and i still have a draw supporter for next turn so that's kind of what i'm thinking okay so we definitely need to knock out this sylveon and we do get a rare candy top deck so that's honestly a super busted top deck um all right so let's see so right now we're hitting for 90 let's be 120 150 because of the choice band that we have. So 180 with a grass energy attachment. So we need one more Rayquaza GX to take a knockout here. So we'll get down another choice band and yeah, we'll just play the Cynthia. We need Rayquaza GX. Hey, we'll take that though. Rare Candy Vicavolt, that does the same job for us actually. So we'll be able to get two more energy into play, which will make us be doing um, uh, 240 damage now, I believe. So we'll get some more energy into play. We'll throw down grass energy there, and we'll throw a lightning energy on this Vicavolt, just in case we do need a non-GX attacker at some point. So we're going to go for a Dragon Break here, and you know, putting some pressure back on our opponent. I'm not sure what they had in hand prior to going for the Guzma play, but um, if they were kind of relying on having an extra turn with this Sylveon being alive, then uh, you know, hopefully this is going to put on enough pressure to kind of swing the tempo back into our favor. And honestly, I think if on this next turn our opponent misses a knockout, then we're going to be in a good spot to win the game uh, no matter what, because we can Guzma up this Tapu Lele, and then we should have enough energy in play between both Vicavolts uh, to actually close out this game. So we'll have to see what our opponent is going to do here. And we do have another Choice Band in hand as well, so even if our opponent has a Field Lord to get rid of these Choice Bands to you know, limit our damage output. I think we're going to be in a good spot here. So we're going to see a Lily that's not a judge. So that's uh, something I'm definitely happy to see. Now, one thing that actually could be really bad for us is if our opponent goes for like a plea GX. Uh, you know, if they time that at the right time, maybe putting all of our Rayquazas and all of the energy on them back into our hand, that could be pretty bad potentially. But we'll have to see what our opponent is going to do here. They have another Sylveon GX. And I think they misplayed here a little bit. They evolved into Curlia before their Lily. I think they should have, you know, held on to the Curlia, getting one less card, but trying to get the rare candy Gardevoir with a fairy energy. So I do think that was a bit of a misstep from our opponent here. 
But so what we're going to do is we're going to get some more energy into play with our Vicavolts. And at this point, I feel like we can't lose. Like I said, if our opponent whiffed the knockout that turn, I feel like the tempo shifts enough to where we can actually close out this game. Even if they get three guard of ours into play next turn, it just doesn't mean anything at this point. So we're going to throw up this Rayquaza GX. And we are going to use Dragon Break. So what are we hitting for? 330 now so Rayquaza GX even against this fairy deck if it goes a little bit unchecked in early game you can see how it can just roll over a slower setup deck uh, like Gardevoir here so we you know we don't have a Guzma for game but at the same time even if we lose three energy plus this choice man we're losing what 120 damage that puts us back down to 210 so with one um, you know with one strong charge we're already knocking out this Gardevoir so our opponent's gonna need something I, I don't know what they're gonna need uh, well i also don't know how much energy is left in our deck i forget offhand so maybe if they could judge us or marsh out of us to where all of our energy is in our hand then oh but i guess they just concede i guess they whipped the fairy energy or something and you can see rayquaza gx managed to take down this guard of our gx deck that is one of the strengths of rayquaza just being such an aggressive pokemon even in this new post rotation format uh, where we don't have max fixers you can see how powerful the deck still is so you guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at Rayquaza GX Vicavolt, but as usual, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you guys can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.